Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you on this special occasion and this special service, giving you thanks for what you have done for us. We thank you for your mercy in giving us what we don't deserve. Thank you for your grace empowering us to accomplish things for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us in spite of us. And thank you, Lord, for your love in giving us salvation. I pray, Lord, as we have this service today and think about these graduates, we'll think of you first and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Welcome. Thank you for braving the weather tonight. Uh, God is good. Uh, it settled down just a little bit before our graduates had to walk in. Uh, this is the second time I've observed a baccalaureate where they had to have plastic over the graduates in a big, long train uh, and able to get into the uh, gymnasium here tonight. We're thankful for that. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be a great day. Looking forward to uh, commencement exercises. Again, glad that you're here. Today we had a chapel that was just a great time. Uh, a lot of testimonies, some really good testimonies uh, coming from students and uh, parents and a grandparent or two, and uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, it's always a time of rejoicing. It's a time of, you know, kind of mixed emotions. Uh, we have uh, one board member. He is known as Dr. Mike. Most of our students know him. And I know he's here somewhere. I'm not going to try to point him out, uh, find him, but he's here. And, oh, I do see him now, all right? Do you have plenty of Kleenex, sir? He doesn't have enough, I'll tell you that. Uh, mixed emotions. He gets so attached to students and invests in Maranatha that uh, this is time when, yes, he rejoices that students are going out, and we do as well. Uh, but we're going to miss a lot of these students here on campus. and and seeing God work in their lives in a regular way and grow in grace. And, and so uh, uh, it is mixed emotion time. We'd like to do some things that we did this morning, and I hope that uh, some of you will understand we need to do this again tonight. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to recognize uh, any of our alumni that are with us today, excluding those that are graduating tonight but, or tomorrow. Any of our alumni, would you please stand right now? Maranatha Baptist Bible College, Baptist Un University alumni. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Let's give them a hand. All right. Now, some of you are going to be standing again, but if you're a parent uh, of a graduate, would you please stand right now? A parent of a graduate. Look at that. Great. Mom and dad. Good. Thank you. Now let's see the grandparents, if you would. Grandparents would stand. We get, all right, good. All right. Thank you. Maybe see it. Perhaps there's a great grandparent. Is does anyone fit that bill tonight and willing to admit it? Okay, anybody? I don't want to miss anybody. I see a few people signaling. I think they're just fanning. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, this morning we tried to, to recognize some special folks, and uh, Jerry McKee and his wife were in this category where they're alumni of Maranatha, and they have a grandchild uh, that is also uh, graduating. In fact, uh, they have three generations of graduates like that, and I know there are others like that, and so I'd like the McKees to stand and anyone else that would fit that category tonight, and you're present three generations. Would you please stand? Anybody besides them, go ahead and do it. All right. Oh, look at that. Let's give them a hand. God bless you. All right. Amen. All right. Uh, you know, we're 50 years down the road now, and it won't be long. We may have, we have add a generation to that, right? Uh, good. We're looking forward to that. Uh, if the Lord tarries, many more like that. There's a special group of people that we do not want to fail to recognize tonight. If you're a pastor of a local church, uh, I'd like you to stand right now if you would do that. Pastor or assistant pastor of, of a local church, please stand for us. All right, let me just go, go ahead. Thank you. May we just say that Maranatha is about the local church. I know that uh, those of us in the early days with Dr. Cedarholm, he said your Bible should fall open uh, to Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I will build my church. And as he saw that, he saw that in a generic sense, and he said uh, local churches to be multiplied uh, throughout the world in our generation, uh, winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about uh, service in and through the local church. We heard that constantly, and by the way, our students still hear that. It's our mission here at Maranatha. Uh, we recognize at Maranatha we are not a local church. 
Uh, we do not want to pretend like we're a local church. We don't want to miscommunicate to let people think that we think uh, we're a local church. We're not. Uh, we are dependent upon local churches like yours represented here tonight uh, for our furtherance and for our ministry. Uh, we are assisting you. And uh, some of the programs that we are doing at Maranatha, I believe, show that to be the case. Uh, we now uh, have the possibility of uh, seminary students and others as well uh, taking courses at the local church level, in the local church, staying at home, working under a pastor. Uh, we recognize that we do education well at Maranatha, and I think we could demonstrate that. Uh, but we also know that there's no substitute for local church experience local church mentorship and so we want to encourage that not only in our extension ministries but in our preparation uh, for service for the Lord so thank you uh, for that uh, we uh, we want to make sure that folks uh, really leave here with the understanding uh, that we love the Lord but we also love his church he gave himself for the church so uh, we have a number of things tonight we uh, Last year, uh, changed up our baccalaureate service a little bit and moved some of our recognitions to this service. And uh, that worked out very well uh, last year. And a lot of people thanked us because we were able to, you know, contain uh, the service the next day. And tomorrow morning we'll have a service. And we want to make sure that we're out in time to eat lunch, right? And so we want to make sure we get those things done. Um, yeah, you say eat lunch. I, you know, we eat about 3 o'clock around here, okay? So, uh, no, we don't want to do that, uh, that's for sure. We want to get uh, it all streamlined. And so we don't want to miss anybody, however. And so tonight we're going to give some of the academic awards, uh, recognizing students for outstanding work in the college and, and uh, in the school or department in which they are earning uh, their degree. And so with that in mind, I'd like to recognize at this time Dr. Larry Oates, the Dean of the College of Bible and Church Ministries. Uh, Dr. Oates will come and recognize some people at this time. Taking time for in-depth academic study of God's Word is important for any Christian who seeks a future in some kind of church-related ministry. Men in the College of Bible and Church Ministries major in pastoral studies or youth ministries. Men and women are Bible majors, biblical studies majors, missions majors, and biblical counseling majors. The outstanding Bible student understands, interprets, and applies biblical truth to every aspect of her life. Will the student please come to the platform as her name is read and her parents please stand Mr. President, may I present the name of the outstanding Bible student for 2018, Katie Dobson. Seminaries leader. All right. At this time, I would like to recognize Dr. T Tim Beenstra, the chair of the Department of Applied Science. Dr. Beenstra. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. This saying is the true definition of science, the one that we hope, expect, and we pray each of our science graduates, and especially our outstanding science uh, student, will take with them wherever God may lead them in career or life. Will the graduate please come to the platform as his name is read and his parents please stand. Mr. President, may I present the 2018 recipient of the Outstanding Science Student Award, Daniel Kral.
I'd like to recognize Dr. Tracy Foster, the Dean of the School of Business. The School of Business offers distinctive recognition of an exceptional business graduating senior at Maranatha Baptist University. The recipient has exhibited excellence in academic and spiritual leadership and holds great promise as a future Christian business professional. Will the graduate please come to the platform as her name is read and her parents please stand. Mr. President, may I present the School of Business Student Achieve Award recipient for 2018, Hannah Flegel. At this time, I'd like to recognize David Handyside, Director of the School of Education. Christian educators must teach with a vision for the future. We can think of no better way to have an enduring effect on the next generation than to teach our children not only to learn, but also to honor God and to love their neighbors and community. This year's Outstanding Future Teacher exemplifies the important servant leadership qualities of a Christian teacher who wants to impact a generation for Christ. Will the graduate please come to the platform where her name is read and her parents please stand. Mr. President, may I present the 2018 recipient of the Outstanding Future Teacher Award, Rachel Mays. All right. At this time, I'd like to recognize Dr. Jeff Miller, uh, Chair of the Department of Humanities. The humanities programs at Maranatha offer the student both breadth and depth of learning. They combine research, communication, reading, and critical thinking to effectively prepare our students to understand and engage the world around them in their chosen profession, both as leaders and as proclaimers of the gospel. Students who graduate with a humanities degree find themselves prepared to assume unique roles with today's changing professional landscape. The outstanding humanities student is one who de most demonstrates the critical skills and personal qualities characteristic of our academic discipline. Will the graduate please come to the platform as her name is read and her parents please stand. Mr. President, may I present the 2018 recipient of the outstanding humanities student and our first communication arts major to receive this award, Kylie Zempel. All right. At this time, I'd like to recognize Dr. David Ledgerwood, Chair of the Department of Music. Mr. President, the Outstanding Musician Award is given to the graduate that the music faculty believes completely exhibits the qualities of the spirit of Maranatha through music. The student is selected on the basis of musicianship, academic achievement, and spiritual and character qualities, as well as Christian service. Will the graduate please come to the platform as his name is read and his parents please stand. Mr. President, may I present the recipient of the 2018 Outstanding Senior Musician Award, Joseph Steinbart.
At this, at this time, I'd like to recognize Susan Rasmussen, the director of the School of Nursing. The Florence Nightingale Best Bedside Nurse Award is given to one student in the graduating nursing class that demonstrates an outstanding bedside manner, displays godly character, and has high academic achievement. A certificate and a $100 award is given by the School of Nursing and sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Gary Sutherland because of their love for the School of Nursing and the students who are preparing to serve the Lord through nursing. This year's recipient has already received his award at the nurse pinning ceremony and his name has been placed on a plaque that is displayed in the School of Nursing. However, we would also like to recognize him tonight as one of Maranatha's outstanding students. Will the recipient and his parents please stand as his name is read? Mr. President, may I announce the recipient of the Florence Nightingale Best Bedside Nurse Award for 2018, Luke Cleghorn. He's, he's saying, why do they keep clapping? Because usually you have to walk all the way up here. We didn't want to cut you short, buddy. All right? Appreciate you so much. Amen. At this time, I'd like to recognize Dr. Larry Oates, Dean of Maranatha Baptist Seminary. The teaching of God's Word is of paramount importance at Maranatha. All students study the English Bible. Students preparing for a ministry of preaching or teaching God's Word should also develop a proficiency in those languages in which the Bible was originally written. Will the seminary graduate please come to the platform as his name is read and his parents and wife please stand. Mr. President, may I present the outstanding student in biblical languages for 2018, Tanner Jotlag. Theology has been called the queen of the sciences. Students theology is the culmination of his philosophical, historical, linguistic, and biblical studies. Will the seminary student please come to the platform as his name is read and his parents and wife please stand. Mr. President, may I present the outstanding seminary student in theology for 2018, 2018, <laughs> Benjamin Flegel. Amen. Time to rejoice, and you're rejoicing tonight, and appreciate that, and uh, giving honor to whom honor is due. We have many needs at Maranatha, as you know, and uh, we, you know we are not. I went on and on again about telling you that we're not a local church, but you know uh, we're important to the local church, and I think sometimes, and my experience being 30 years in the pastorate, I look at it from that angle, and then I look at it nine years in this role. And uh, I recognize that sometimes because we're not a local church, we kind of get forgotten. That is when it comes to the checkbook, the pocketbook, the bank book, and uh, all those other important books, okay? And, uh, and so I would ask that you would think about that. Think about investing in an institution that exact is enabling local church ministry, uh, producing workers for the local church. Uh, one of the big needs that we have for this year, uh, our vehicles are frankly running down and uh, you know I I think we were in Heritage Singers in 89 churches 17,000 miles uh, last summer 
And uh, that's just one group that's gone out, and we have our choirs that go out, our teams that go out, and, and we have an aging fleet. And uh, it hasn't been the easiest time to have money to invest back in those areas. So we're asking our alumni, we're asking our friends to, to help us. And we have a bigger goal than we've ever had before uh, for fundraising during this time of the year, during graduation. And I know some of you are sitting there saying, you don't understand, we just got done paying school bills, all right? And, and some of you are saying, we're not even done with that, okay? Uh, I also know that, and I also know that uh, God is good and God has abundance. The cattle on a thousand hills we sang when we were young, we taught our children that. I know he's fully capable. And uh, we're, we have a $50,000 goal to get two used, newer used vans uh, to replace those uh, in our aging fleet. So we ask that you'd give. We have June 1 as, as our goal uh, to reach, or our time to reach that goal. And so if you didn't come tonight prepared, I know we sent out uh, an email or two letting you know about that, and we understand it if you didn't read it, but uh, we're, we're telling you now, and we hope that you'll be willing to invest. And I, uh, I'm not begging tonight because I know that uh, God has supplied the needs of Maranatha Baptist Bible College and Maranatha Baptist University uh, year by year, in fact, day by day and moment by moment, as you know, uh, through all these 50 years. And we have confidence that he'll continue to do that. Uh, the point is, uh, do you want to be a part of what God is doing? And I trust that you will uh, want to have a part in that. And so I'm going to ask uh, everyone to stand, and we're going to ask God's blessing on the offering. It also gives you a little relief uh, from those seats. Uh, I also want to let you know that we have uh, CDs available in the bookstore uh, for our heritage singers. You might check out in the lobby as well afterwards if you're interested in that. Uh, but we uh, would certainly be grateful to God uh, for anything that you could do uh, to help us to that end. And so I'm going to ask the men to come, and, and uh, as they come, uh, we're going to pray and ask God to do what he only can do. Father, thank you so much for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness all the time. And what you've shown to Maranatha, that you've shown yourself strong. Uh, Lord, we not only are known in the past as the miracle school, but Lord, we see your evident hand upon us on a regular basis. Thank you for that. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessing. Use these folks, I pray, uh, to meet needs that you want to meet. Uh, include them, I pray, in the partnership of Maranatha uh, to develop leaders for ministry in the local church in the world and, Lord, may we be to the praise of your glory. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were uh, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the uh, redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Rejoice and be glad, the Redeemer has come. Go look on his cradle, his cross, and his tomb. Rejoice and be glad, it is sunshine at last. The clouds have departed, the shadows are past. Sound his praises, tell the story of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell with gladness, he liveth again, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad for the blood that was shed. Redemption is finished, the price has been paid. Rejoice and be glad, now the pardon is free. The just for the unjust has died on the tree. Sound his praises, tell the story of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell with gladness, he liveth again, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad for the Lamb that was slain. Rejoice and rejoice, rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad for our King is on high. He's pleading for us on his throne in the sky. Rejoice and be glad for he cometh again. He cometh in glory, the Lamb that was slain, the Lamb that was slain. Sound his praises, tell the story of him who was slain. Sound his praises, Tell with gladness, he cometh again, he cometh again. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. 
Amen. If that doesn't thrill your soul, something's broken, all right? It's very fitting that our baccalaureate speaker this evening is Dr. Doug Jackson. Uh, Dr. Jackson is the chairman of the board at Maranatha Baptist University, and uh, we're so thankful for his friendship and his ministry. This being our 50th year, we have uh, a graduate of Maranatha that has known Maranatha from the beginning, and uh, we are looking forward to what he has to say to us tonight. On May the 18th, I had a little discussion with Dr. Jackson about this date, but uh, a couple of times in previous years, his church would have an anniversary for his longevity, and I always remember it was on May the 18th. And so uh, coming up to May the 18th here, he's going to be 40 years uh, at Community Baptist Church of Saginaw, Michigan, and that is a milestone that very few pastors ever reach. Uh, a lot of pastors will have, no offense to anyone here, but they'll have 40 years experience in 25 different churches, uh, you know, spreading out those years. And so uh, that's not the case here. Uh, I always admired those that had longevity and, in ministry in their church. And, you know, I, the longest I stayed anywhere was 13 years. But I, Dr. Jackson, I did have the, you know, I guess the note that the church that I founded and pastored I left it, and they wanted me to come back, and so I did. All right, so uh, that, that shows that they were very unintelligent or uh, something else was going on. <laughs> Pastor Jackson's influence has extended well beyond his own local church. It's extended throughout the state of Michigan as well as the United States and even uh, to the mission field. He gave exceptional leadership in somewhat troubled times to the Michigan Association of Christian Schools, in years gone by, as well as the Independent Fundamental Association of Michigan. As an MBU board member, he has served faithfully since 1984, and he's been the chairman of the board since 1998. He graduated in the first four-year graduating class from Maranatha Baptist Bible College in 1972. When he arrived on campus the opening year in 1968, he only intended to stay one year. He attended Maranatha to please his father, and uh, having to assemble his own dormitory bed the first day wasn't a great first impression, he said. <laughs> he played every sport involving a ball, he writes, and uh, he, uh, he remembers traveling on extension to ministries on the weekend, and he said with those two things, that combination, he was hooked. And Maranatha has been a part of his life ever since. Dr. Jackson has traveled between his Michigan home in Watertown, Wisconsin, nearly 150 times. And he's never, that's the key word, he has never missed a board meeting. His firmness, wisdom, and humility were evident qualities in leading Maranatha through several presidential transitions. And the same character traits continue to shape the direction of MBU today. Dr. Jackson has a heart for world missions and he serves as a board member on the executive committee of Baptist World Mission. The Lord hasn't called him to evangelism, but he is an effective personal soul winner and a frequent speaker in churches, camps, and educational institutions across America. The name Doug Jackson is respected in many pulpits. His personality is warm. He is gracious in his demeanor. He's generous with his possessions. He knows how to have a good time, and to make people feel at ease. And all the while, he is firm in his convictions. Dr. Jackson's philosophy of ministry is both biblical and balanced. He has energy in ministry. And that's amazing for an old man like him. <laughs> Pastor Jackson, he gets the last word tonight. I probably shouldn't have done that. Pastor Jackson and his wife, Kathy, have been married for over 40 years, and they have three children. Kathy is sitting there with their son, Clint, right next. Wave, Clint. There you go, buddy. That's it. Turn around. Good. All right. Doug will talk about Clint a little bit. Thanks, Clint. And uh, they have twin daughters. And uh, uh, Christina is married to Pastor Aaron Wilson. They uh, they're at, serve at Camp Kobiak. Is, he's the director. They're the mother. He's... <laughs> She is the mother of Jackson and Will, two grandchildren. And Katrina is married to Pastor Daniel Bonner and the mother of Caitlin, Autumn, and Caleb. Douglas. What's that? His middle name is Douglas. Middle name is Douglas, all right. 
another little story. We're good friends, and uh, my daughter had uh, a son, and Dr. Jackson said, if you name him Jackson, uh, I'll give you a Jackson, that is them, and, uh, or it was better than that, it was a Benjamin, yeah, Benjamin. and uh, give him a Benjamin. And uh, so we worked it out, and I sent him a picture of my grandson, newly born, uh, with a $100 bill there, okay? And I said, remember what you said. So he was able to, uh, to pay that off. He likes the names Douglas and Jackson, just so you know that. <laughs> Doug Jackson is a godly man with a heart for the Lord. His family is his greatest asset. Kathy is an example of Christian grace and virtue, and his children have all enhanced his ministry in their own unique ways. Dr. Jackson expresses deep appreciation for MBU, saying this, there have been a good number of people who have sacrificed to have what we have today. It's important that we never look like we've suffered because we haven't. He goes on to say, those of us have given of our time, talents, and our treasures, and it's been for the cause of Christ, hoping that students will pick up the vision to be to the praise of his glory. That's the heart of the man. We're going to hear from him now. Let's welcome him to the pulpit, if we could. Dr. Jackson, you come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Marriott. Yes. Man, you start talking like that, it does make me, does make me feel a little old. But I know I'm not as old as Daryl over there, so that's good. Amen. That's great. Good to see you folks here. Am I still signing these diplomas? Yes, uh, okay, okay. My name's going to be on your diploma, too. So, did you know that? Yeah, I didn't know for sure. Thank you for inviting me for this uh, 50th anniversary baccalaureate service. Looking forward to it. I had a pair of glasses, and Dr. Marriott stepped on them. So, these are brand new glasses somebody just gave me. Uh, and so I don't know how they're going to work tonight, but that'll be good. Uh, we'll find out in a little bit. It's always good to be with my friend, Dr. Marriott. We have a lot of fun together. I sure appreciate his leadership and uh, how uh, he, God has blessed this place in the last nine years since he's been president. I praise the Lord for, again, his leadership. Please take your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark 14, verses 3 through 9. Let's all stand. I'll let you change uh, your uh, position there for a few moments as I read from Mark 14, 3 through 9. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me, for ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this place. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Father, for this service. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that this evening's service may be uh, a service that uh, we would cherish as we think back on your word. I pray that, uh, that uh, the challenge that you've laid on my heart will be received by these graduates. I thank you for them. I thank you, Father, for the way that they have uh, been taught. I thank you, Father, for the way they have lived. Now, Father, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Wow, many were getting ready for the Passover. Jesus was getting ready for Calvary. It was Friday before the triumphant entry. He was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper. Neither Matthew or Mark named the woman, but John indicates it was Mary, the sister of Martha, the sister of Lazarus. Mary, of course, uh, was there when the Lord Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. 
And in verse number 8, it says, she had done what she could. She had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to burying. She had done what she could. Now, that's an important phrase. Tell the person next to you, go ahead. Go ahead. I know this is baccalaureate service, but just relax a bit. Tell the person next to you she had done what she could. Go ahead, tell them. All right, great. I like, I, I like, I like to get you involved, all right? All right. A few years ago, a missionary came to me and showed me a dollar bill. Then he went on to tell me the significance of that dollar bill. He said he was given that dollar at a missions conference several years ago. He went on to tell me that after he gave his testimony concerning his missionary ministry, that my Down syndrome son, Clint, came up to him and handed him a dollar bill. Now, I don't know if you know it, but Clint thinks a dollar bill covers everything. Matter of fact, if you were at a dinner with Clint and he says, I'm going to pay, at the end, you better be ready to pay whatever is over one dollar. <laughs> so the man went on to tell me, he said, you know, he said, Clint said, it's for you. It's for you. And the missionary was very, uh, very sincere. He said, the missionary said, I I've kept that dollar bill Dr. Jackson, to remind me that God would meet my needs. And he said, secondly, as a reminder that Clint did what he could to help me get to the mission field. Here in Mark chapter 14 is a reminder uh, that Mary did what she could, and in doing so, she encouraged the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I like the idea that I can encourage the Lord. And as I read this portion of Scripture, I see the Lord was encouraged. Let her alone. She's done what she could do for me. Mary loved the Lord, and so she showed her love for the Lord. I want us to notice, first of all, her treasure. Mary loved the Lord. Oh, she, she poured out her precious oil on the Lord. The word precious indicates that it was very costly. How many of you graduates, uh, ready, are in love? Come on, slip your hands up if you are in love. Let me see. Let me see your hands. You're in love. You're in love. Come on. If you've got a girlfriend out there and she thinks you love her and you don't raise your hand, you are in trouble, buddy. She's in love. How many? Hold your hands up nice and And you're not ashamed to say you're in love. Amen. That's great. How many of you are going to get married this summer? Let me see. How many are going to get married? Well, that's too many. I don't have that many 20s. Normally, I, what I normally do in chapel, I normally try to give out a little money, right? Did you say you were getting, okay, come on up, man. I'll give you a 20 here. And the guy behind you, did you say you're getting married too? I can bring it to him. No, no, I don't want you to bring it to him. Hey, where's your wife? Where's your wife at? Is your wife here too? Where? Oh, right there. How, did you know about this? <laughs> How about the next one? Who, who's another one? Another one? Right back there. Come on up here. And you, young lady, come on up. I, yeah, come on up. You getting married this summer? Where's she at? Wait, which one is she? <laughs> yeah, you guys come on up. Hey, I got a special. For 20 bucks, I can marry you right now. <laughs> Who are you marrying? He's not here. He's not here? Is he a good guy? Okay. Everybody approves of him? Okay. <laughs> What's his name? Stefan. Stefan? Where's he at? He's in Chicago. Chicago? Mm -hmm. You're marrying a guy from Chicago? <laughs> You're from Chicago? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to mess with you. Go ahead. <laughs> I got another 20 left. Who's, over, who's get, all right, right over there. And then all I've got is $11 to get home on. All right. <laughs> Who are you marrying? Caleb. Caleb? Yeah, that's a good name. My grandson's name is Caleb Douglas. All right. Maybe you'll have a, yeah. Well, here's, here's 10, just in case oh. you do that sway you. Okay. Ah, here's a dollar, too. Okay, great. All right, great. All right. Love. Man, it's great to be in love, isn't it? I, I'm in love. I've been married to that girl back there for 46 years, 
in 10 months. That's right. I tell you what, we have been, oh. Yeah, we had a great time. It's been a wonderful time. Wow, I love her to death. She is wonderful. Let me tell you, if you've uh, found love, then you found that authentic love is costly. Yeah. When your heart feels like it's going to explode when you see her, or when you, when, when you hear her voice, uh, it's like the hills come alive with the sound of music. It is very, very costly. Big time. Alabaster box full of ointment costly. Why? Because you love her or you love him. And the cost is justified by love. My wonderful wife, last May, bought me for my birthday a trolling motor. How many fishermen do we have here tonight? How many? All right, good. She bought me a, 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 a mini Coda. 80 pound thrush, self deploying, huh? Huh? I, am I talking to you, fisherman? You understand what I'm talking? Yeah, self deploying 80 thrust mini Coda trolling motor. Self deploying, that is a big deal when you're old like me. And it will hold you in the river so you can get underneath those low line branches, or it will keep you in the deep so you can catch either smallies or walleyes. I'M TELLING YOU, IT IS WONDERFUL. <clears throat> HOW MANY THINK THAT'S A PRETTY COOL, EXTRAVAGANT GIFT? ALL THE FISHERMEN, YEAH, THAT'S A GOOD GIFT, ANY GUYS? YEAH, I'M TELLING YOU. BUT WAIT, THERE'S MORE. IT'S GOT REMOTE CONTROL, NOT JUST THE FOOT PEDAL, REMOTE CONTROL. BESIDES, YOU DON'T SEEM ONE BIT INTERESTED. BESIDES, <laughs> BESIDES, IT'S HOOKED UP TO GPS. I CAN MARK, AND I'VE GOT MAPS OF THE LAKES. I MEAN, THIS IS SO COOL. AND WAIT, THAT'S NOT ALL. SHE BOUGHT ME a brand new red fish and ski 18 foot boat to put it on. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm telling you what, I was floored. I'm telling you, on it, 115 horse E Tech motor. It is, I mean, I'm telling you what, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it. It's great. Just need a little time to get out in it, but I'm telling you what a great gift. And she bought it for me. I don't need any Daisy to pluck and say, she loves me, 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 she loves me. That's big. What have you done to show your love for our Lord? Or maybe a better question is, has your love for Jesus cost you anything lately? Have you given what you could? Have you done what you could? She did what she could, Jesus said. Oh, there were some critics that uh, couldn't believe Mary would pour out that expensive oil on Jesus because it could have been sold to help the poor. But as we can see by the response of Jesus, he was encouraged that she did what she could. You have a treasure, young people. It's your Maranatha Baptist University education. That's your treasure. It's a precious treasure. It's precious because it's Christian education. God was honored. Christ was lifted up. I still remember Dr. B. Myron Cedarholm handing me my uh, diploma some 46 years ago. And uh, I, I still remember how special it was. And I still remember how... I, I just couldn't wait to get out and get in that local church. I'd been working in a local church for a year as a youth pastor. And I remember it was one of the greatest feelings of my life to get that diploma. And then to use those things that I had learned to train young people to the praise of his glory. Maranatha has a rich history. It has been built on sacrifice and a vision to send graduates out to start local churches and to build and strengthen local churches to the praise of his glory. Yes, our Maranatha Baptist University education is a precious treasure. Like Mary's treasure, it's precious. And like Mary's alabaster box of ointment, her treasure was valuable. You know, worth more than 300 pence. In today's economy, that would be about $30,000. My wife and I were 11 years without children. 
we weren't supposed to have children, but then the Lord blessed us with twin daughters that both graduated from Maranatha and married Maranatha graduates and blessed us with our son, Clint. And Clint, standing back up again, <laughs> Clint is a blessing. You say, what? My girls married guys they hardly knew. Clint stayed with me all these years. I praise the Lord. <laughs> My twin daughters, Christina and Katrina, graduated from MBU in 2005 and are both serving the Lord, as I said, with their husbands. As I look at their education and the money we spent, I wholeheartedly say it was worth every penny, every penny. It was a great value, a wonderful, wonderful investment, a precious investment, a treasure that's being poured out on the Lord today, not only in their churches, but in their jobs. And, and in the lives of my five grandchildren, I can see that treasure being poured out on them on a daily basis. Graduates, recognize that you have a precious, valuable treasure. It's your Maranatha Baptist University education. Pour it out on Jesus. Pour it out on Jesus. Her task. She poured out her oil upon Jesus. She used it for Jesus. You know, as Christians, our main goal in life is not to make a living, but to live for God. Sometimes... We get so focused on being successful or on making a living, we neglect to see what really counts for eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Paul said in Philippians 3, 14, I press toward the mark for the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the oldest of six. I have three brothers that are pastors, one sister married to a pastor, one sister who passed away breast cancer some 12 years ago. My dad was in construction. My dad got saved, and when he got saved, he really focused on honoring God with his life and his family. And in every Bible he ever gave us growing up, there was always this little saying, only one life, it will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. My dad died a few years back. He was 67 years old. He left the construction field and, and uh, got ordained and started helping little churches. I remember I went to a little church that he had worked at for a while, and, and I went there the first time, went back the second time, and I said, Dad, you got new chairs, you got new asphalt, new pavement. I said, how in the world did you ever raise the money to take care of all that, to get that all fixed up in that little church? He said, it was simple, son. It was your inheritance. But anyway. <laughs> the phrase that moved my heart was verse 8. Ready? Go ahead, tell the person next to you. You know what it is. She did what she could. Go ahead, tell them. She did what she could. What did you do? She poured out her treasure. She anointed Jesus with her oil. She got it. You look back at verse 6. Jesus said, she hath wrought a good work on me. The word good indicates that it was beautiful to the Lord. This action really pleased the Lord. Then in verse number 7, for ye have the poor with you always... Of course, that was in reference back to the complainers who were criticizing Mary for anointing Jesus with the expensive oil. And when, whenever, whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She got it. 
Some of the disciples didn't understand it. Many of the disciples didn't understand it, but she remembered when Jesus raised her brother from the dead. And I'm sure Martha told her that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And I'm sure she remembered the prophetic words of the Savior. Jesus was so encouraged by Mary who understood what he was going to go through, the sacrifice that was going to be made. The Lord did not pause to explain. He was still talking about Mary's treasure, her service, and wanted to keep the focus on her. She did what she could. He is saying, she did this for me before I am buried. It's tremendous. Mary pre-anointed Jesus' body, preparing him for what was coming, the cross, and then the tomb. But only Mary got it. She got it. The disciples didn't. Judas and the complainers, and by the way, John also mentions Judas. Judas and the complainers were more focused on the extravagant uh, gift, the price, but Jesus was focusing on the precious gift. Not the price, but the precious gift. How many times have we missed out on truly knowing God's will because we have focused on the material rather than the spiritual. Jesus wasn't discounting the poor, but emphasizing the wonderful act of service and sacrifice. Jesus knew about sacrifice. Jesus left the splendor of heaven to come to earth, to be our savior. He knew about sacrifice. He knew he was facing the cross, the burying time. This wasn't some religious thing either for Mary. This was a relationship thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she believed in Christ. She had trusted, put her faith in Christ. She trusted in Jesus. Do you know Jesus is your Savior today? I want to say yes, sir. We're, of course, graduates, and I know you graduates have all professed to know Christ is your Savior. And I'm confident that every Maranatha Baptist University graduate here is so conscious, would want your loved ones and your friends to know Jesus as their personal Savior if they came tonight, not knowing Jesus as their Savior. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. If you're here tonight, you don't know Christ is your personal Savior, friend. Trust in Christ. Jesus Christ can make a difference in your life. It'd be great for you to bow your head and ask Jesus to come into your heart, forgive you of your sin, and put your trust in him. So back in verse number 8. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. She did what she could do. She did what she could do. If every one of you graduates would use your treasure to do what you can do for Jesus, our local churches will be strengthened, and your service would certainly make an impact for the cause of Christ, no matter what you do or where you go. Do what you can do. Third point, and we're done. Her tribute. Mark chapter 14, verse number 9. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Wow. Huh? That, is that huge? That's huge. Do nod your head like this. Just show me. You're still with me. How many are still with me? Are you still with me? Okay, great. It was January of uh, 1979. 1979. I was looking down back here. Where's Steve? Where's he at? There, right back there. What, remember that? January of 1979? Yep. I was shaken to find out my good buddy from high school and college had tragically died. He was pastor in the Detroit area. 
His funeral is up at Bethany Baptist in Grand Blanc, my home church at that time. Pastor Doug McLaughlin had a wonderful, comforting, challenging funeral message. After the service, Bill's mom, Mrs. Packer, hugged me and just kept on hugging me. Neither of us could talk, but I could feel her loss and I could feel her love. When she let go, Mr. Packer put his arms around me, then he let me go and put his great big old hands on each of my shoulders. And he looked deep into my eyes. And I looked back into his swollen, bloodshot, tear-drained eyes. And Mr. Packer said, Doug, now Bill is gone, and we're depending upon you to take up the slack in serving Jesus. Doug, Take up the slack. Bill is buried in a cemetery just a few miles of where we grew up. There's a memorial marker there that identifies his birth and his death. But there's also a living memorial in my heart that was created by those words of his father when he said, Doug, now that Bill is gone, we're depending upon you to take up the slack in serving Jesus. That's motivated me for some almost 40 years now. I think of that often. That's why I keep on pouring my treasure out, doing what I can do. I can't do everything, but I can do something. And I hope that's something I'm doing, is encouraging my Jesus. As I look into your eyes, I call on you to take up the slack. Pour out your treasure. The cause of Christ demands it, and the Savior deserves it. You can't do everything, but you can do something. So Maranatha Baptist University grad, do what you can do for Jesus and pour out your treasure on him now father i thank you for this time you've given us tonight i thank you for these graduates i thank you for their lives and father i thank you for the treasure they have and father may they take up the slack and pour out that treasure and may you be encouraged by our pouring out the treasure you've given to us in jesus name amen
I won't be handing out any money, but uh, <laughs> I would like to pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you tonight for the reminder of all that you have given to us and all that we owe you. Father, I pray that you'd impress upon each of our hearts, especially these graduates of that need, to give their lives entirely for you. Thank you that that day is coming when we will stand before you and our lives will face that evaluation. Lord, we pray that your grace will help us prepare for that day. Father, we think of tomorrow's events. We pray for those traveling. Please give them safety. Please give us rest tonight. And then bring us back tomorrow for the commencement exercises. We pray these things in the name of the one who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed. May the Lord bless you.